Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, my name is Barbara, um, and I am a youth librarian at the Hillsdale Library. Um, I use she, her pronouns. And um, thank you so much for coming to this um, author reading. We are uh, have a special treat because we don't not only have the author, we also have the illustrator and compo music composer. So um, we're really glad you're here. And um, my colleagues, Lan, Tree, and Lindsay will be assisting with the event. Um, we're going to start today with a land acknowledgement. Multnomah County is sited upon the ancestral homelands of the Multnomah, Malala, Kathlamet, Chinook, Clackamas, Tualatin, Kalapuya, and many other nations, indigenous nations. These nations have become the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde, the Confederated Tribes of Siletz Indians, as well as the Chinook Nation and Cowlitz Nation in Washington State. Land acknowledgments recognize and respect the enduring relationships that indigenous people have with their traditional homelands. The effects of colonization can still be felt today and land acknowledgments are a small step down the path of repair, reconciliation and cultural revitalization. This land acknowledgement was courtesy of Melanie Fye. We have a little bit of housekeeping information. Um, we ask you to please stay muted while the author is speaking. And there may be times that we can be unmuted for conversations, but um, we'll let Andy um, take the lead on that. Um, we're going to ask you to mainly use the chat for questions and we will uh, read off your questions um, at, um, in the question and answer period. Um, you can also use the chat to let us know if you need something repeated or need us to slow down or if you have any um, if you're having any technical problems and we'll try and troubleshoot. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Lan. Thank you, Barbara. Hello, my name is Lan Phan. I am a Vietnamese bilingual library assistant at Blakely Heights Library location. As many of you probably know, uh, in this month of May, we celebrate Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders um, heritage. I am very happy today to, uh, to have with us three young talents who have personal connections to Oregon. After the reading of their work, we will have some time for questions and answers and a chance to get to know them better. For everyone who attends, we will have a random drawing for copies of the book. Winners will be contacted by email this week, and the winners can choose their location uh, for pickup. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our three guests. First of all, we have Andy Nguyen. And Andy was born in Oregon, in Portland, where he spent his childhood daydreaming. He now res resides in Oakland, California, working as a nurse practitioner. These days, you also find Andy creating and embarking on adventures with his wife and their beloved mini Dashen scout. <laughs> Tidwan is an artist who loves drawing and painting. When she is not showing her artwork, he works as a pharmacist at an anticoagulation clinic. She calls Portland, Oregon home and loves to explore and travel with her husband in the Labradoodle Bodhi. Phương Nam Doan, or PN, as many call her, was born in Portland, Oregon, and trained in classical piano. She enjoys discovering new, new restaurants and baking recipes. When she's not on food expedition with her husband and Ubi, is it Ubi? The Corgi PN works in cancer research in Seattle, Washington. And now, let us sit back and enjoy reading along with Andy, P, and PN. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, uh, Lon, for the uh, gracious um, introduction. Thank you, Barbara, um, for introducing our, this event as well. Um, we'll get started with our reading. Um, so myself and Fung Nam will be reading, and T will be sharing uh, the, uh, the book. Um, the title is The Day I Woke Up Different. And it's by myself, Andy A. Nguyen, the author, T. Duan, who's the illustrator, she's the one that's flipping the book, and then Fung Nam, who's a 
um, the music composer uh, of uh, the story, um, and she'll be assisting me, or not assisting me, but uh, co-reading uh, with me as well. All right. So, one day I woke up and realized I was different. I looked in the mirror, and to my surprise, I saw a round face and slanted Asian eyes. Slowly, I walked to the kitchen, dragging a frown. But what mom said next, flipped it upside down. She spoke in Vietnamese, the language that sings, and held out my favorite meal, packed for me to bring. As I ran off to school, like any other day, mom reminded me before I made my way. Con đi học giỏi nha. She cried, and in Vietnamese mixed with English, I respectfully replied, yeah, ma, goodbye. At school, afraid the kids would laugh my way, and in hopes the class roll call would be delayed. I sat at my desk hiding in plain sight because even teacher couldn't say my name right. I strayed alone at recess until I was surrounded. There was a wall of kids and suddenly I was hounded. What are you? The voices thundered violently, scared and unsure how to answer. I stood there silently. The wall demanded, Are you white or are you black? I thought to myself, What color am I? Well, I haven't ever thought of that. I have black hair, light skin, and I'm short in height. Oh, I have both. So I answered, I'm half black and half white. No, you're not. Don't you lie. One you have a round said, face with slanted Asian eyes. Well, my dad is from Vietnam, and so is my mom. And I was born in America with a last name Nguyen. When I add it together, I must be Vietnamese American. Although I was born in the United States, the kids didn't care. I could feel their hate. They shouted. Go back to where you came from. We don't want your kind here. And with those mean words, slowly, I began to feel my eyes tear. I looked around at the surrounding wall and it was all white pillars standing tall. One by one, their arms began to swing, but somehow I slipped through the fence without a damn thing. Alone I sat, tearful and blue. Then I heard a loud voice call out, Hey you! It was a girl, and she asked. Hey, kid with the round face and slanted Asian eyes, why do you sit there with silent cries? You see, I'm different, and they don't like me, I explained. How mean, she said. They tease me too, like you, but instead, they put me down because of my flat nose and dark skin. They even make fun of me for being too thin. I repeated, too thin? She sighed. As a girl in this world, where do I begin? Her name was Gwen. She had a voice so bold, I sat there listening to her story unfold. Gwen shared. Everyone tells me how I should look and how I should stay home and learn to clean and cook. These traditional expectations of a girl are the same held on both sides of the world. They say girls are weak and girls should not speak, but I play sports better than all the boys at their peak. I am different, my beauty does not blend, but I came here to be more than just a trend. Like you, my dad is from Vietnam and so is my mom. But when the war ended, they sailed to the island of Galang. I was born in a camp there where my family waited to be free. They call someone like me a refugee. Then when I was a one year old, we flew overseas. My parents sacrificed it all to find a better life for me. 
and we found ourselves lost, new to a world without a thing, with only the hopes and opportunities this new life could bring. We arrived in America finding new customs and words to learn, yet the traditions of my motherland would not be returned. America, they call it the land of the free, while Yignam holds a high respect for the elderly. Our culture of Yignam, so full and rich, especially in the food passed down through the family dish. From grandma to mom to me, to one day kids of my own, I'll make the same dishes, they'll know the same home. Pho, bánh xèo, bún bò huế, canh chua, and thịt kho. These are some of the tasty meals passed down to us all. I replied, don't forget my favorite, bánh mì. Yes. Yes, Gwen agreed. A sandwich blending the best of all worlds, like you and me. We are born Vietnamese with family as our culture's core. It is less about the me because we as a family can do more. With hard work and persistence, working hours on end, our parents sacrificed in order to fend. We are raised in the States with focus on the individual. Creative and expressive in America, our dreams are visible. From nothing to something, we can reach for the stars. Be the best you and you can go far. Vietnamese American, the blend of two worlds whose views can collide and spin you in a whirl. Learn both sides, add the good, subtract the bad. Love those worlds and wear them as an ironclad. If you love yourself, it will shield you from the hate. She asked. Are there things about you that you can appreciate? I replied, well, I guess my slanted Asian eyes, they look wise, Gwen urged. Be proud. Like me, I wear my dark skin like a prize. When they call us different, it really means unique. The best of all sides is what the world seeks. If we love all the parts, we make the whole, then we can offer the world the love we know. Vietnamese American, that's what we are. Be the best you and you can go far. I get it. The best of our worlds, I repeated. She said, yes, you better believe it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And so, can um, I'm Andy, the author. Um, I'm T, the illustrator. I'm Phu Nam. I'm the composer. And the day I woke up different um, was written as a story about self acceptance, and you, you know in this world where there's a lot of, you know, mean things going on, um, there's bullies out there and, you know, a lot of times it doesn't feel good to be the person uh, that's receiving, uh, on the receiving end of the, of the bullying. And so, you know, you know, through self-acceptance, uh, you know, we, we, we really believe that that builds what we call intr intrinsic validation. And intrinsic validation is essentially um, just, you know, putting what you feel uh, about yourself at the highest priority, meaning that that matters the most, how you feel about yourself. So whatever anyone says to you, whether good or bad, and mainly whether bad, you know, it won't matter as much because you feel good about yourself. Um, and so, you know, we writ wrote this book, uh, in the lens of a Vietnamese American you know, child. Um, and we use culture because we believe that identity helps to foster self-acceptance and intrinsic validation. Um, and through culture, you know, you start building the fundamentals of self-acceptance and intrinsic validation and identity. And so, you know, we, we use all the, you know, Vietnamese culture as uh, an example um, of, uh, you know, with food, uh, art, um, 
and even just customs and values uh, in, in, in the story. And, you know, we, you know, when we were writing this story, we, uh, we, we really wanted to research the history of Vietnamese culture. And when we, what we found was um, in our research, we looked at the, you know, the historic Vietnamese art cultures specifically. Um, and what we found were the main art cultures are, you know, proverbs and poetry. So that's essentially why the book is uh, written in rhyme and in poetic form um, to honor, uh, you know, the ancestors and to hopefully carry, you know, the messages that they taught us forward to the next generation, which are you all. Um, and then what we found was, uh, you know, you know, Ang Nam, where which was uh, the Vietnamese form of the Chinese, uh, the the the, um, the blue porcelain um, that we, you know, here in the states we think of, uh, we call it like the China ware, uh, where it's like you know the the blue bowl um, and it has like the the I mean the white bowl with the blue paint on it. Um, and in the 14th century, while we were doing this research, we found that uh, you know it was manufactured pretty strongly in. Um, uh, Vietnam, and so that's where like the, they would you know manufacture them, like mass produce them, and then ship them out um, to to the rest of the world. And it would became such a uh, you know an art form that they they developed their own style called Ang Nam. And if you go to the, all the museums of Hue and Hanoi, um, which are like you know the central and also uh, um, you know the no northern areas, you can see uh, you know these old you know uh, ancient uh, you know porcelain. Um, dishes that have this specific, you know, clouds of the Ang Nam, uh, where which Ang Nam is, you know, like uh, historically the one of the, the uh, older names of Vietnam, actually. Um, you know, food obviously is a big part of Vietnamese culture, you know, bun sale, bun bò hoi, tè ca, bun sale. And so, you know, we infuse that here too as well. Uh, and, you know, uh, also a big, big uh, historical um, art uh, culture in Vietnam was watercolor painting. And so essentially that's why we chose the style of the book um, was to honor you, you know, the, the, history, the historic art uh, scenes of Vietnam. And you know, each scene is uh, you know, drawn by T and um, each scene is a fit, actual a physical watercolor painting that we had to take from uh, you know, physical to digital back to physical. And I'll let uh, T, um, you know, go uh, further in depth uh, with uh, the, uh, the illustrations. Thank you, Yanni. So, yeah, so I'll, I'm going to discuss about the illustrations and how I used the illustrations to infuse the Vietnamese culture and heritage. So there were a lot of intentional motifs that were used in the illustrations in the book, um, in the book ends and throughout the book. And if you don't already know, a motif is just a repeating pattern or a theme. So there uh, was a motif of blue patterns on the end pages and in the book of roses and lotus to rep represent the two countries in the story. Um, one is for the US and one is for, the v for Vietnam. Can you guess which flower roses and uh, lotus represents the US and which one represents Vietnam? You can enter your guests in the, the chat. Don't be shy. <laughs> that's okay if, you, if you're not sure. So the rose is the national flower of the US. Yep, and very good lotus is for Vietnam. Very, very good. <laughs> Roses for Portland, that's very true too. <laughs> <laughs> So here's another um, of the motif that was in the book. There is also a scene where Anne's dog stares out at another dog, Gwen's dog, who's sitting beneath a, a tree that's kind of uniquely shaped. So take a look at that tree. What do you think the shape of it looks like? If you have any guesses, even if, you know, don't be shy, you can enter it in the chat. Okay, so bonsai, Vietnam, Vietnam map, very good. 
Yeah, I think it looks like a bonsai tree. Vietnam, Vietnam map as well. Very good. So the branches, leaves, and the exaggerated roots of that tree are meant to form the shape of the country of Vietnam. Many of the Vietnamese uh, refugees who immigrated to the US after the fall of Saigon, including the parents of Andy, myself, and Phnom, came from South Vietnam. And so it was meaningful for this Vietnam-shaped tree to have its roots southwards as a nod to our roots. And tucked in the outer corners of the full two-page spread about Gwyn's parents' path from Vietnam to the US, or crops that symbolize the countries at the beginning and final destination of this journey. Um, and in case you don't know, a crop is a plant grown as food to eat. So can you guess what is the crop on the left corner for Vietnam and what's the crop in the right corner for the US? Rice and corn, very good. Rice for Vietnam and corn for the US. Great answers, that, that is the crop for the uh, rice for Vietnam and corn for, U, um, corn for US. And I also had a lot of fun infusing some of the uh, culture aspects of Vietnam into the book illustrations. For example, the family scene where Gwen describes her family's arrival in America and learning new customs and words, and the scene of being born Vietnamese with family as our culture's core portrays a multi-generational family in the illustrations. Vietnam has a tradition of families living in multi-generational homes. So for those of you who may not know what a multi-generational home is, an example is grandparents, parents and grandchildren living with the, within the same home. The illustrations in the first and second scenes where Anna's in his house shows flip-flops. In the Vietnamese culture and in many Asian cultures, it's customary to remove shoes before entering the house as a sign of respect and cleanliness. Instead, many will change into indoor shoes, such as sandals or flip-flops when inside the house. Uh, type yes if you also take your outdoor shoes off when you enter the house. Or you can not. Oh, yep, a lot of people. And if you don't, that's okay too. There's nothing wrong. A lot of people. Yeah, this custom, it's, I didn't know until I looked into it, it's actually associated with the past Vietnam traditions of having floor oriented dining and sleeping. And there were several colors I enjoyed painting that carried cultural meanings. Blue, Andy had touched on it a bit before. Um, blue is a color used a lot in the book. Blue is a more subtle color of calm and simplicity in Vietnam and can be found among many buildings and homes and on the decor of Vietnamese ceramics and artworks. The other color with cultural ties used in the book is a jade version of green. Jade carries a significant cultural symbol in Vietnam where it's commonly used in jewelry such as rings, bracelets, and pendant necklaces and carries the wish of good luck and prosperity. It's also believed to keep away negative spirits and energy. And for us in particular, it's the color of the fourth chakra. So our book company name, Fourth World Press, was inspired by this fourth chakra and its meaning. The fourth chakra, it's also known as the heart chakra, which is one of the seven energy wheels that run throughout the body. And the fourth chakra is connected to love and compassion. So the name Fourth World Press was chosen to carry forth the mission of sharing love and compassion through stories. And lastly, food is a huge part of the Vietnamese culture. And one of my favorite scenes to illustrate in the book was the food. And any questions? Thank you for that, Andy and T. That was great. And um, if you would like to um, type questions in the chat, you can go ahead and do that. Well, I like the story. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What part of the story did you enjoy? 
all of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the lovely story. We're in the car um, watching your, um, your story. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you for joining us. You know, this is a great part about, um, you know, this whole uh, virtual world is that you can be anywhere and still enjoy all these things. We love the story. The story is beautiful and the picture as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you know, this, this story was written. Um, oh, we have a question here. Where did you learn about the meaning of color? Good. Um, well, I growing up, I saw my mom uh, and a lot of my aunts wear jade um, bracelets and pendants and necklaces. So I would ask them, um, you know, why do I see so much, you know, jade worn by so many of my relatives and sold in a lot of the Vietnamese jewelry stores. So I kind of learned it through word of mouth. And then I, um, as I grew up, I grew more interested in it. So I uh, researched it more and, and learned about it more, especially being an artist, color is something that's very interesting to me and how color can be, have different cultural meanings depending on different cultures. Like the color red has a different meaning in a lot of Asian cultures compared to a lot of Western cultures. And I just find that so fascinating. Do you all have plans to author or illustrate more children's books? That's a great question. I'm gonna let Andy take this. Yeah, um, <laughs> this is uh, our first uh, children's book um, that we uh, created together. And just in general, our first children's book uh, we created. Um, you know, we do have plans uh, for uh, future stories, um, future narratives. Um, and, uh, you know, our mission, like T um, mentioned earlier, was to carry stories of uh, love and compassion forward. Um, you know, this story was written through like a Vietnamese lens. Um, obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's to deal with self-acceptance um, through the Vietnamese lens, but, you know, it's anyone who's been othered, um, you know, who's ever felt bullied, uh, who's uh, been, you know, um, uh, felt like, you know, small. And so we wanted to uh, just, you know, tell, tell that, that story. And so, you know, in, within the story, we also uh, worked to, um, you know, n navigate, um, you know, messages of uh, compassion and, uh, you know, issues that are, are, that people deal with in, in a very uh, meaningful way, um, such as, you know, uh, you know, the, the stereotypes of, you know, um, Asians uh, in, in America, stereotypes of like women in general, like worldwide. Um, and so we do have uh, our, you know, plans to um, tell more stories to help um, tackle these issues that we, you know, some of us have felt growing up, but also that we, we, what we hear from our audience as, and, um, you know, the day-to-day -day contact uh, of, of people um, as well. So there are plans, but this, this being our first story, we wanted to at least honor this as, as much as possible and, you know, um, present it um, as much to uh, like as wide of an audience as, as possible. So down the pipeline there, we, we do intend to write more stories. So one, jo Joanne Liu said, this book is absolutely wonderful and beautiful. There aren't enough books about the AAPI experience. So I really appreciate that I can share this book with my kids. Ah, looking forward to seeing more from Before Press. Yeah, when you know when we set out to write this story, this is probably our um, you know first. This we're about a, a one a year or and a half out from it being published. And prior to that, you know, it was published uh, June uh, January. I'm sorry, January 2020, right? Like right before the pandemic. Um, that's when we actually got the physical copy in our hands and. Prior to that, it was about four years out that, you know, we had conceptualized this story um, and, you know, to gather the right team to uh, create this, this, um, this project. And, uh, but it, you know, it was two years from publication um, that we put, you know, the pen to the paper and started illustrating, composing music, 
um, the, um, for for this uh, this story. So it took about like two years to 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 do. And when I when we we're looking when I was you know looking up uh, when we we're all looking up uh, stories and researching, we didn't find that many uh, API books. Uh, you know, before and even far and few Vietnamese uh, stories uh, as well. And, you know, we noticed that most of the narratives of the Vietnamese story was centered around the world, um, the Vietnamese American War, which, you know, is very, uh, you know, necessary because it was a big piece of our histories um, that intersect uh, who we are as Vietnamese Americans um, and just, you know, or Vietnam and here in the U.S. Um, but, you know, we, we, as much as we wanted to honor, you know, that piece of uh, history, we also wanted to, um, you know, find a sincere and, um, you know, loving way to carry uh, and, uh, you know, um, carry the, the narrative forward to where, you know, the future generation will eventually lead to. So absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I just want to insert one comment quickly is that I believe that we will have enough copies for everybody who attends today's program. So you don't need to go to a bookstore uh, to get a copy. Um, we will contact you and uh, wow. get the book to the location of your choice for pickup. That's amazing, thank you. Oh no, thank you, <laughs> three of you. <laughs> I didn't realize it takes that long to get the book out. Um, it's incredible, so. Yeah. So happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like for my part, the illustration part alone took took a long time because I I have a you know I have a full time job, so I have to spend the time after you know in the evenings and the and the weekends to um, create the illustrations and have to do many drafts until like we were really happy with it because we didn't want to you know share this book and bring it out into the public until we're really thoroughly happy with it. So it, it was a learning process, but I think we grew a lot and learned a lot because of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, I see, I see Theo Barton um, uh, messaged, uh, we'd love to have the characters in the story become chapter book series for early readers. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for more chapter book characters to become part of our life in a way that we would love to have one Vietnamese heritage in a day-to-day -day life of Vietnamese American kids. Absolutely. Um, I love that, Theo, that you brought that up. Um, and that's one of the, um, you know, the thoughts for the future books is that, you know, there's, uh, you know, to center it around both, you know, On and Quinn's uh, experiences of, you know, what they had to go through as they, 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 they mature um, and, you know, get older and uh, what they have to deal with being, uh, you know, not only Vietnamese American, but like living this dual world. So whether you're Vietnamese American, immigrant American, you know, um, you know, Black American uh, with a you know an Amer this American society, um, you know, Latino, uh, Latina, um, uh, you know, um, you know, in, in U.S. any 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 dual world that you had to live in, um, you know, LGBTQ, uh, a, IA plus, um, also living in this dual world. Um, you know, they can, you know, you would be able to hopefully, um, you know, connect and resonate how, you know, there's a, this, uh, this um, interesting dynamic of uh, living this dual world and how to navigate that. And really it's, you know, through the, you know, we believe uh, through the best of your worlds, right? Bringing like the best of each world and, you know, to, 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 to move forward. Um, and so, yeah, you know, we have Calvin Hobbes, we have, uh, you know, the Peanuts gang, we have all these, amazing um and i'm probably missing like a ton of uh, you know characters but we hope that, you know on and gwen can be you know a household a name one day you know vietnamese being vietnamese american so can one of you talk more about the composition piece associated with the book yeah um that's uh Fung nam's piece but i'll, I'll help uh, bring her uh, in into the conversation where um so we're still working on uh, getting the um the uh the the, um, the audio narrative piece out that that production piece we've already recorded the piano and we've already kind of mm -hmm. like but uh, you know it takes a long process to get that production piece out but we do have a, a low fee um you know uh music piece that we have on youtube if you just look you look at fourth world press youtube 
um, there is a Fung Nam's uh, uh, piece in, but I'll let her talk to uh, her, that experience a little bit more. Hi. So um, I learned um, pian playing piano since I was nine years old. So I played for 10 years and competed in piano. And so when Andy asked me to compose the part of this book, it's very exciting. And um, what I tried to do was once you guys get a chance to listen to it when it's ready, to have a little bit of um, Asian sounding influence to it, but also to um, reflect the emotions of the characters in the book was uh, mainly what I tried to focus on. Yeah, and um, you know, what, what was like uh, an uh, amazing part about, um, you know, doing this uh, audio piece was and doing the readings and having the, the music was like really like, again, you know, bringing the best of our worlds together. So, you know, in the Lofi, uh, when you listen to it, you know, um, the, the musical composition, uh, you know, Fung Nam has her, she lays out her, uh, you know, like, like piano keys riff, um, like melodic melodies, and it's cut up. And then we, you know, we throw in some, um, you know, like break beats, which are like, you know, hip hop that, um, uh, you know, um, drums in the back. Um, you know that you know hip hop's a huge you know American uh, you know black and black culture black and black American um, uh, you, know, his, you know historical worldwide now you know um, uh, you know uh, culture and so you know we infuse that and you know for me I, I'm a, I'm also a street dancer I, I grew up in a breaking um, back in like the like the the late nineties and so you know I was around a lot and so you know for me you know infusing that. We also infuse um, a lot of uh, Southeast Asian uh, sounds, like the you know some flute sounds, a bamboo flute sounds, um, also in that low fee. So that 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 kind of is a nod, um, and also some string um, instruments, um, you know, um, uh, the Vietnamese culture. So you know we took those pieces, uh, those like uh, and as accents into the whole musical piece, and you can hear it very subtly, but it's there um, if you really break it down. And so again, we we worked very hard to infuse uh you know all our worlds the best of it all together would you guys like it if um i played a sample of it of the music to listen to okay so i'll play maybe like a snippet of it Let me share screen Try that again. So, share YouTube. Where do I find? Oh, there it is. Okay. Here we go. Can you hear it? Thumbs up if you can. All right. And yeah, so, you know, you know, and later on in the songs, that's when you start hearing the other, you know, uh, wind, you know, like the bamboo um, flutes and the other uh, Asian um, instruments and the accents. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the other dimension. We wanted this to be a three piece, um, you know, part of this, this project. And, you know, hence that's why there's three of us. Um, and bringing in um, as much of our you know, artistic talent you know, uh, as we could, being you know, Asian, Vietnamese, uh, you know, American, you know, we grew up in a household where you know, it was very uh, you know, like practical, right? Like you know, art wasn't very practical, but practical because our parents coming from the war, um, you know, they are, you know, we're essentially all three of us are products of war, right? And so, you know, they didn't have the, uh, you know, the, um, the tools to understand how art could, you know, be, you know, life-saving, right? And so they were just strictly survival, you know, work, you know, uh, you know pay the bills, put your kids through um, the school so that they can get good jobs. And so, you know, um, 
you know, they really pushed hard on, on that aspect, which rightfully so, because, you know, that's just being practical. You don't have as much resources to do anything else. Um, but along the way, you know, we're in kind of a, you know, you know, not the, you know, you know, we kind of like, you know, skid our ways around and kind of uh, uh, did our thing and, you know, found art, you know, um, and, you know, essentially, you know, that, there you have it. Yeah, we had the priv privilege of opportunity of having opportunity beyond that need to survive to explore things that are not necessary for survival, but that nourish our soul. Yeah, and, um, you know, a big piece of why we love storytelling so much and we love art so much is because through storytelling, it helps people to step out of themselves and into someone else's shoes to build more what we call empathy. And empathy is, you know, being able to, uh, you know, um, understand and feel what another person feels without actually being that person. I mean, you can never feel, you know, understand them fully, but you can get, you know, somewhat closer. And, you know, for us, you know, rewriting a story, one to infuse that we understand where our parents are coming from. You know, we understand where, um, you know, uh, you know, how, what they had to go through, but also we wanted to tell our story so that other people can understand, um, you know, our communities as well. And so, you know, the way the story ends is, you know, it, it ends in a way where it's actually the beginning of your story. And so we hope that, you know, any readers, you know, who, um, you know, come across the story will, you know, come, keep coming back to it because we, because T, Phung Nam um, and I, we put a lot of Easter eggs into it. So the more you know Vietnamese culture, the more you get out of this book. Um, and and the, the more you, mat you, you, you mature as a person, and you come back to this book, the more you, you'll get out of it as well. And so, you know, we hope that, you know, it can help, you know, our, our young readers to start the journey of, uh, you know, self-love, self-acceptance, and, and just self-introspection, meaning like you kind of look at yourself and, and how, you know, and kind of have those conversations at an earlier age so that they can become whole people sooner. Um, so, you know, that's why it's written the way it, it is. And that's why it ends the way it, it does to, you know, hopefully, be the start of your story. And if you're already on the journey for us who are older readers, then hopefully it's a nice pause that you can just, you know, take a, sit, a step back and like look and like, think of what you've gone through and be like, wow, I've gone through a lot. And be proud. There are also Easter eggs of dogs that are throughout the book, just because we, we are all dog owners and we're really in love with our dogs. Um, so you'll notice uh, um, a dachshund, which is what Andy has, um, which is Anne's book, and um, a labradoodle, which is the type of dog I have, which is Gwen's dog. And then halfway through the book, I snuck in a corgi because that's when Fnam got a corgi halfway through creating the book. So you'll see that corgi snuck in too. And I kind of use the dogs to kind of foreshadow or... Um, be an extension of the emotion of the characters as well. And I guess that the three of you um, get together often, either physically in person or virtually, but what about the dogs? Uh, do the three dogs get together? <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my dog, the Labradoodle and Phnam's dog, the Corgi, they get together more often just because we proximity. Um, Phnam lives a bit closer to me, so it's easier to get together. And our dogs are similar in age and energy. They're, they're about two-ish and they're mm -hmm. crazy high energy. <laughs> and Andy has the calmer, older dog <laughs> who, when, when they're around her, she's like, mm. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, dogs are a very, um, you know, to us and our family, it's like a very American thing. Like we grew up not being able to have, you know, pets in the house because of a, there's just like this stigma, you know, in Vietnamese culture where, um, you know, like, yeah, you just, you just, they just don't allow us to have dogs. And so when we grew up, we're like, oh, we really want a dog. So we all each, you know, eventually got one. And then now we've, you know, converted our parents into dog lovers too as well. So 
you know, that's, uh, you know, we had Adam in mm -hmm. as like, you know, as a, you know, that, that piece of, uh, Amer you know, American mm -hmm. culture too, as well. Mm -hmm. We have a question that says, can you share about why you chose to have one character with lighter skin and one with darker skin? Absolutely. So, you know, as you can see, you know, Fung Nam, T and myself are, you know, very fair skin, right? But our families in, uh, you know, Vietnam are very dark. Um, they have a lot of melanin, very nice complexion. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not typical for, uh, uh, you know, a Vietnamese person to always be light skin. There's, it varies, but like, there's a lot of the different shades. Um, and so, you know, on being a Vietnamese American, you know, we gave him the fair skin because, you know, that's, you know, we don't get a lot of sun here in the, in the U.S., especially in like, you know, West Coast and being in the Northwest, right? Uh, you don't get a lot of like uh, that vitamin D and the sun. Um, but Gwen, being a refugee, you know, going from Vietnam to Galang, um, Indonesia, uh, and then, you know, to the, to the U.S., you know, I mean, you know, there's more stops in that in the journey to our Vietnamese refugee, but we chose those as a main highlighted spots. Um, you know, she had a more, she had a darker complexion, um, you know, just kind of to honor, you know, like what Vietnamese people do look, uh, you know, uh, a lot more like um, in Vietnam. But also, you know, there's, we wanted to, you know, break the stereotypes of, you know, what uh, we didn't, what we, we believe that isn't as loving, right? Um, you know, we wanted people to be proud of whatever they look like, whether, whatever color skin they are. And so, you know, uh, you know, there is that, you know, um, colorism in Vietnamese culture, and we can be honest with that. Um, and so we wanted to, you know, uh, you know, speak to that where, you know, that may not be what we feel is the best of the world when you, uh, you know, look at your, your, your skin tone and, you know, you don't, you know, uh, resonate so much with being dark, but we wanted people to say, "Hey, love yourself. You have dark skin. Love it." You know, um, you know. So that that was uh, a big reason why we chose uh, to, um, you know, honor uh, Gwen with, you know, like a, you know, her true melanin skin tone um, as much as possible. Will you make more books? One question, Seth. <laughs> Yeah, our, our goal is to uh, write and create more stories, more books, um, more, uh, you know, just different, you know, we have different mediums, but we, we do, we would like to create uh, um, more more books um, uh, with uh, Gwen and on when the time is right and when we can get to that point. Um, There's a big process and the more support we can get um, with the story, the, the, the sooner we can, um, you know, be in the position to create more stories and have more, uh, you know, autonomy to, uh, you know, offer these pieces that where we feel are uh, more loving and more compassionate. And one more question I got uh, is that, will this book be available in Vietnamese? So currently, you know, we, um, we are trying to um, uh, translate it. Well, we are, we're not trying to, we are translating it in uh, Vietnamese. Um, the, the, the challenge of that is that the way it's written in its prose, it's written in, um, you know, rhyme and we, so we're, we're also working to honor that as well, because we don't want to lose, we can obviously just Google translate everything. Right. And that'd be really easy, but we wanted to honor the integrity of our story in our book. Like, if you look at this book here, like we, we tried hard to bring everything as the highest value, like even the, the paper quality the printing quality, the colors, like um, we put a lot of energy into it. And so we also want to honor the integrity of our art as well when we do translate um, this into Vietnamese. And um, hopefully we can, you know, offer it in, uh, you know, Vietnamese where it's still pretty cool and still uh, honors uh, the, the, that. Selling bookstores, yeah. So right now we're um, we're, we're uh, we have it available primarily um, in our at our website fourthworldpress.com. 
um, since we are, you know, publishers, we're also the distri distributors. So that's our main place. So that 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 resource, when you purchase a book there, goes directly to us, and so that we can mm -hmm. build the, um, the 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 resource pool enough to create the next stories and help hopefully foster other um, storytellers in the future to tell their stories as well. Um, we do have it at the Win Wing Luke uh, Museum Bookstore up in Seattle. Um, uh, so that's at the like you know Asian American Pacific Islander um, uh, Museum up in Seattle, connected to the Bruce Lee Museum, which is pretty awesome, at least to me. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, um, and so the, it is available there as well. Um, you, know, um, you know, it is available. At, I believe Multnomah County Library uh, is, is offering it too. Uh, so that's another place. <laughs> um, but you know, I think slowly, gradually, as we build this uh, resource pool and we get to the position where we can feel comfortable we can start making um uh you know more leaps we do intend to hopefully offer it more widespread um in, in bookstores across the u.s and hopefully over vietnam even and even other places currently this book is in um, i think about five countries germany mm -hmm. australia new zealand canada u.s i think we're yeah, I think that, and just across the U.S. as well. So it is worldwide, but uh, you know, for now, it's just through our website primarily um, for those reasons. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you guys, you you all um, were able to see earlier that we did uh, put a resource page in for freebies um, uh, to, um, you know, it's off our, our website, but we wanted to offer you, you all uh, freebies, um, you know, for the, uh, Fung, you know, Fung Nam, she does, a, she, she's a huge baker, food is a big piece of it. She uh, does these amazing ube cookies and ube is like a purple yam. It's a really big in Filipino culture. Um, they put in everything like halo halo. They put it in, uh, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, you know, today now there's tons of fusions of different um, types of like ube uh, types of food, but ube is so so good. Um, mm -hmm. And so you know, Funa makes these amazing. So that's her recipe that she adapted from uh, another recipe. We also have um, an activity uh, page uh, for the for the book that you can go along with, um, and uh, we also offer an adult quote unquote, children's uh, coloring a book page that you can uh, color on. It's um, along with the lo-fi, um, lo-fi, lo-fidelity um, uh, uh, music, uh, musical uh, composition that Fungnam did. And the, that, that's essentially just the, um, our cover page of the, the lo-fi art. Um, so I think the library will include all these links um, in the emails of the participants. So we can send it uh, later this week along with the link to your free copy of the book. Yes, thank, thank you everyone. Um, that was great. So many um, great insights and um, really appreciated hearing from all of you. And thank you to everyone for your questions. Um, we, so we will be, uh, we have your emails from when you registered for this event. So we will email you about how to, um, how to get your free copy of the book. So um, if you, you can just let us know when you receive that email, what library you'd like to pick it up at. Um, and um, as you know, there was, um, Andy just mentioned those great freebies. So um, that's really sweet. We'll um, include that in the, I know it's not always easy to, do the links in the um, chat in uh, in Zoom. So um, we'll include that in, in that email as well. And so thank you to Andy, T, and Fong. We've really appreciated it. And um, if you have any last thoughts, you're welcome to say that. Didn't want to cut anyone off. Um, oh, we do ask you to, um, if you um, have a moment to fill out um, an online um, feedback form about the program today. Um, and that is posted in the chat. And I will look forward to the recipe. It sounds so yummy. <laughs> uh, 
Um, just want to mention, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm very, very happy to meet uh, Andy, T, and PN. Um, thank you for this opportunity. And hopefully we'll see you again. Yeah, you know, and we would, a year we would all like to thank Multnomah Library Counties for giving us this opportunity and space to share the story.